And I welcome you to our Bible study here on this Wednesday morning. It's great to be with you, and it's great to study God's holy word with you. Today, I'm going to be dealing with the value of a person's life. The value of a person's life. Let's ask God to bless this study today from his word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that we can find out our value in your sight. May the word of God reveal to us your mind, your purpose, your desire. In the name of Jesus and for the glory of God Almighty, amen. The word of God tells us very clearly and precisely that God put us here on earth for a purpose. Every person that becomes a living soul and that begins at a, a conception, uh, a lot of people think a baby is not a human being till it's delivered. Well, that's not so. The Word of God tells us the moment it is conceived, it is a human being. So it is that God has blessed us with the word of God on this subject. And God has a plan for every single human being. Even before the baby is in the womb, God has a plan. God knows that the two couples are going to come together and they're going to have this child. And before they even have the child or conceive the child, the plan of God is for that baby's life. And that, that plan is what God desires it to be. And it is always for his glory. The word of God tells us this reality in a couple of verses that I want to mention. Jeremiah 1 5 says, God speaking, hear it, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart, I appointed you. Now the word of God says that to a prophet, and it says it to every human being that is conceived. Before I formed you. Who formed that child in the woman's, the virgin's um, womb? Who did that? God did that. God did that. It isn't just something that is produced by our own uh, bodies. It is something that God has formed. He formed me in my mother's womb. It's all a product of God. And when I do anything to take away that wonderful, wonderful product of God, then what takes place? I deny the plan of God for that child. Abortion denies the plan of God. It is God's product. It is not the woman's product or the man's product. It is, according to Jeremiah, God's product. And he has a plan for that child that he formed. And then we note in Psalm 139, verses 13 to 18, For you created my innermost being. The psalmist is talking to God. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God, again, is saying, I formed that child. It is my product. It is not the father or the mother's product. It is my product. Now, that's a different slant on it, isn't it? He goes on, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Have you ever noticed how God produces a leg in the right place. 
He produces an arm in the right place, two eyes in the right place. I could go into the form of the body. And unless something violates what God has done, God is forming that body in the mother's womb. Even as I've said, he formed my body in my mother's womb. Now, he says, I'm going to praise you for I see how wonderfully you have formed humanity. I know that full well, says the psalmist. My frame, my body, was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place that's in the mother's womb, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, which was in the womb itself, your eyes saw my unformed body. Have you ever watched the stages of a baby being formed in the womb of the mother? It is something that is so beautiful, so wonderful, and so transparently God. And then somebody sucks it out. Now you understand God is not in abortion. It is a sin against God Almighty. The one that does it is guilty. The one it is done to is guilty. And there must be repentance and forsaking it if God's going to forgive them. But hear the word of God. It is not the word of Pastor Horn. Although I agree with it fully, it is the word of God. And God said, I saw you before you were formed, and I watched you as I formed you. It goes on, all the days ordained for me were written in a book. God wrote in a book that he has, whatever that means, he recorded the days of my life. Now, in an abortion that's cut off. But if you're not aborted, and thank God my mother didn't abort me when she didn't want to have another child, she had me, and look what God has produced. It was a written down form in eternity that God created in the process of time. And I am a product of God Almighty. And so are you. It says this, how precious to me are your thoughts, God, your thoughts about me, your thoughts about how accurately and beautifully you created the body I'm living in. How vast is the sum of those thoughts? Were I to count them, the psalmist says, they would be outnumbering the grains of the sea. When I awake, I am still with you. So understand this, my dear, dear friends. You are a product that God did not produce as an afterthought. You are a product that God produced with a foreknowledge of your receiving him as your Savior, and he had a plan for your life. He has a plan for everyone's life. And that plan has been aborted by too many people and they'll have to answer for that abortion. But the reality is this. The scripture clearly says God formed me and you and has a plan for our lives. All right, what are we to do with our lives if his plan is going to be produced in us and through us. Well, my dear friends, part of that plan contains serving God. God didn't create me to serve myself. God created me to serve him. It says very clearly in Scripture, be careful. This is in Joshua 22, 5. Be careful to obey the teachings of God. The Lord 
and his servant to love the Lord your God and obey his commandments and to continue to follow him and serve him the best that you can. Now the word of God says, part of the plan of God for my life and a great part of it is to serve God. God gave me an opportunity to be born and the plan of God in large measure anyways is that I might represent him to a lost world and teach people the word of God that God has taught me. What is the other part of that plan that we find in Romans 12 verses 10 to 11 and 13? Love each other. I am to love each one that are members of the body of Christ with a special love, the love of God. I am to love one another, give each other more honor than you want for yourselves. Put them first. That's part of the plan of God for my life in serving him. It goes on to say, do not be lazy, but work hard, serving the Lord with all your heart. We are here to give God the service he deserves. He produced us, he formed us, and he wants to use us to declare his great glory and his great love. Now, when I go to heaven, I'm going to be serving God. So why would it be different on this earth? It isn't. God wants you and I to take our time, our years on this earth, to serve him in everything we do and to love the people of God. It goes on to say, share with God's people who need help. Bring strangers into your homes. And that, my friends, is part of ministering to others that God has formed and have chosen to receive him as their Lord and Savior. Now, in Psalm 100, verses 1 and 2, it tells us this. While we're on this earth, shout to the Lord, all ye earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before his presence with singing. The Word of God tells me, through my lifestyle, through my attitude, through my testimony, to tell people about Jesus Christ and live in obedience to his Word. Now, when my life is over on this earth, it could be five years, ten years, I mean, I could have been in an accident as a child, and my life would be over. But no longer do I have to worry about what I'm to do, where I'm from, but now I have to concern myself, not worry, but concern myself with my destination. I am going to go to heaven because I receive Christ as my Savior one day. What is heaven like? If I'm heading in that direction, shouldn't I know what heaven is like? And God's word tells me a little bit about what heaven is like. The word of God says to us in John 14 to my father's house has many dwelling places. Heaven has many dwelling places. If it were not true, Jesus says, would I have told I would have told you, and I go to prepare that place for you. We, according to Philippians three twenty, are citizens of heaven through receiving Christ as our Savior. That's part of the plan of God to take us to heaven when our time on earth is over. We, as the word of God says through Paul, we look forward to the Lord Jesus Christ coming from heaven 
as our Savior. The Word of God tells us over and over and over some beautiful things about heaven. What is heaven like? It is a place of unspeakable joy. There is nothing to cause crying. There's only the presence of God and the reality that our life is hid with Christ in God and we are part of the family of God. That's why many of us sing the song, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, I know my destination is heaven. Now the word of God tells me not only is there not going to be any crying there, that there's going to be joy there, that we're going to serve God there. It is a place where service of God is not a hard thing. It is a beautiful thing. The Word of God tells us nothing will prepare us for the beauty and the presence of a God-filled creation. And God is going to bring that heaven down to this earth, establish a new earth, and we're going to dwell with him forever and ever and ever. There are so many other things I could say to you about heaven and about what the Word of God reveals about it. One thing is it stated, it's too wonderful for words. Another thing is that God doesn't want us to know too much about it, for we would not be content to be on this earth. Paul went to heaven, and he said, God said, don't tell what you saw. Why? Because people would not be content to live on this earth and to live out the perfect will of God while they're down here if they knew what Paul saw. Now you hear a lot of reports about what heaven is and what heaven is not. Well, I'm not here to discuss those. I can only tell you, if they talk about what they saw in heaven and Paul was told not to, I'd rather think that Paul had the truth and they had a fantasy. I can only tell you the reality is that God doesn't want us to know too much until we get there. And then it'll be a big surprise and a wonderful, wonderful eternity. So what have we talked about in this time of this Bible study? Well, number one, God knew us. He knew we'd receive him as our Savior. And when we were formed in our belly's womb, he was the doing, he was the forming of it. He was the creating of it. He was the one that produced it in the mother's womb. The mother was a carrier. The father prov provided a seed, but God created that child. And when that child is aborted, we are aborting God's creation, not ours. Then the Word of God makes it clear that He has a plan for us. And the plan He has for us is a good plan, a wonderful plan. I'm experiencing that plan. And if you know Christ as your Savior, you're in the midst of that plan. And then while we're on this earth, God's plan is for us to serve him, to obey him, to tell people about him, and to love one another, and many other things. Then when I, the end of our life is over, and God calls us to heaven, he has a place prepared for us. It is a place too wonderful for words. It is a place where we will serve him, where we will rejoice in him, where there'll be no more tears, no more death, no more dying, nothing of that. 
It is a place where eternity reigns for us, and the joy is all because of God's love and grace and mercy in saving us through receiving him as our Savior. I could say so much more about this, but I want you to understand you're not a mistake. You're God's plan. Let God's plan alone and let him produce a perfect life for you as you rely on him and trust him and recognize your God's handiwork, your God's blessed handiwork. Have a great, great Wednesday. May God bless you. And we look forward to tomorrow discussing another Bible concept and teaching. Have a great day.